there. Kevin Blake is with us, I'm pleased to say, joining us. Uh, Kevin, it's good to have you. Um, first of all, I saw some lines that you know, the, the Irish um, authorities are looking at maybe putting some stuff in, in place. What's been the reaction in Ireland to this? Is, is this something that's been noted over there? Oh, yes, look, it's a huge case, Sean, and everyone's paying attention to it and looking for the ramifications of it. And I just, it, it's just frustrating to listen to some of the conversation around this case, Boise, is because there's so much misdirection in this and focusing in on, on words, you know, relatively minor things, focusing in on them and spending so much time talking about them. And, like, you have to break this down to its fundamental parts. Why did this case happen? What's the answer to that? The answer is, not, number one, stewarding. That if we're to believe the evidence that was given in this case by Robbie Dunn, this all arose because of concerns about Briony, Briony Frost riding and his view that it wasn't being adequately dealt with by the stewards, the various panels of stewards that dealt with, dealt with those various incidents. And if we're led to believe the evidence, other jockeys had concerns too. So you have a situation where, the, to, in, the jockeys, in some jockeys' opinions, the stewarding of interference wasn't being dealt with properly. So in Robbie's case, he felt he had to deal with it himself. And this seems to be like a widely accepted thing within the weighing room, this notion of self-policing, which is absolutely ludicrous in 2021, is it not, Sean? Well, like a self-policing system just doesn't work. Well, it completely favours senior jockeys, strong personalities. and It's just fundamentally unfair. And you, you have that situation where he's gone in and tried to deal with it himself. He's clearly dealt with it very poorly, as the verdict of the case has shown. But it, it all comes back to the policing. You know, where were, where were the other people in the weighing room when he was dealing with this so poorly? You know, Matt has talked about, you know, why didn't his friends tap him on the shoulder and say he was out of line? Why does that have to happen? You know, the weighing room is full of officials. You know, how do we get to the point where jockeys are abusing one, uh, one abusing another or abusing each other? And this isn't the first case we've come across, Sean. We saw a very well-publicised case with, with Frankie de Tory and a young apprentice, Dylan Brown McMonagall at Ascot, only a couple of months ago. Oh, that, that was Kevin, Kevin, I've got to introduce you. And it was, ne it was Kevin, never brought up in the Kevin, stewards' report. Kevin, You know, if it, if it hadn't have played out in public. No, Matt, let me speak. You had your chance now. This is a, this is a failure of, of officialdom, a failure of stewarding. And this is why we've let, you know, there's parallels with the Freddie Tillicky case. You know, in both cases, we had jockeys coming out saying in their evidence, it's in, oh, pretty much saying it's in our interest to remain neutral in stewards' inquiries, to, to not not shake any cages, not dob anyone in. You know, what are the officials doing? If there was proper policing within the weighing room environment, I don't think any of these cases would have come about. If the, if the interference was properly stewarded, I don't think either of, the, either of these cases would have come about. You know, there's gross failures here. And that's before you even get on to the way the BHA investigated the case, the way the PJA responded to the case. Like these, for me, are the things we need to be focusing on rather than the word rancid. And, and so on. You know, this is all misdirection to take away from, from the important issues that we really need to be focusing on if we're going to make improvements and actually move forward from this absolute mess that, that this case is and that the Tillicky case are. Like, these are really concerning cases for the sport. And I feel we're getting lost in, in this misdirection and bluster I, around rel relatively insignificant thing. words and things. Kevin, the one thing, I mean, look, a lot of what you said makes sense. Don't worry. I'm, I agree with you on the policing of, of, of the sport and, and race riding, which effectively we're led to believe, if we're to believe the case, that this actually this dispute between Frost and, and Dunn originally came from. But the idea that there are lots of fish officials in the weighing room, how has this been allowed to happen? I mean, you're not really trying to tell the people watching this show that if you stick officials in a place, there is no bullying and nothing bad happens, in which case there would be no police force in the world that ever have an issue. You're not really telling the people that are watching this that if you have a whole load of officials in a, in a particular area, everything is happy. Matt, you need one. You need someone in there with a bit of authority that's enforcing the rules. Like, that isn't but rocket bullying science. Goes we're, on we're not, we're not talking officials, about a workplace bullying, with, with a thousand people in it. Bullying goes on in schools. Bullying goes on in schools. There are teachers. <laughs> bullying goes on in the police force. They are all technically officials. Bullying goes on. Sticking more officials in will not make any difference to that. It boils down to simple decency. Bullying is a, is a, is a thing that should be wiped out, and when it's found... Whoever has bullied anyone should be taken to task. But yeah, the idea that you're going to stick it's officials, officials in it's going to change you, is ridiculous. You, you can't have no one there enforcing the rules and expect the rules to be enforced. 
Well, you're you saying know, there this are was, This was all there. avoidable. You're this saying there all are officials. Let's, this, let's, this, let's, should, let... this should have been dealt with at a much, much earlier stage in a much well, more all, appropriate way. That. And it's a failure of officialdom that that didn't happen. It's... it's um... There's two things, it seems to me, there. There's the specifics of this case, and you've touched on it, Matt, and Kevin, you've you've brought it up as well, that um, maybe there were, there were um, concerns or misgivings or um, resentment about um, Bryony Frost riding. If that were the case, why didn't it form part of the defence? Why, why weren't they able to show us 20 videos of that? It's an easy thing to do. You can get a video of every single race that's been run in Britain. Um, if if, well, if somebody's like, riding badly, it should have been able to be. I, I think that's a red herring, isn't it? Because if it, if it were demonstrably the case, it would have been demonstrated, and it wasn't. It might well be, Sean. And I didn't see all the angles and all the cases, but the accusations was there, and it was a frustration that they weren't being dealt with that led to the situation we're in. It may well be a red herring. Is there, but is there this a is... possibility, Kevin, that with those kind of incidents, race riding we're talking here, and as far as I'm aware, none of us have been professional jockeys, although I'm sure you've been a good rider in your time, Kev. But um, uh, is there a possibility, I'm just saying, that things that happen in a race that you then go and watch at home after, they look like nothing at home, but actually to the jockey in the race, it felt like a big thing at the time? Yeah, well, this is it. And that's, that's where, look, expertise of stewarding comes in. You know, the stewards should be able to see what's what's a breach of the rules and what isn't. And, you know, when, when there's such inconsistency there in the stewarding, you know, it, it leads to frustrations. And, you know, the, the, like I, I'm talking about it for years and years and blue in the face. Like the stewarding system that we have, though, clearly isn't fit for purpose in this day and age. You know, we, we need high, we need really, really competent stewards that are, you know, a smaller panel of them that are acting in a consistent way. Because when you have these ever-changing panels, you will inevitably get inconsistency, and that brings up frustrations. Not just for the jockeys, but for the for the professionals, for the um, for the for the punters looking in. And these frustrations can sometimes boil over, and that's clearly what's happened here in, in a very concerning way. You've made the point before, Kevin, that the the, the system of self-policing doesn't work. Um, just just expand quickly on on why it doesn't work well it's ridiculous sean it's it's you know if it, it, we'll, we'll hypothetical weighing room situation if a senior jockey uh, if gets put through the rail by an apprentice he can come in grab him up by his collar stick him against the wall and say don't ever ever do that again and that might well work and everyone might think that's self-policing playing out in a favorable way what if a senior jockey puts the young apprentice through the rail do you think the young apprentice is going to pull in and grab a senior guy by the collar and put him up against the wall? You know, it's just so highly unlikely to happen. And that's why it doesn't work. It favours seniority, it favours strong personalities. And that's why it, sh it should never be considered uh, a viable or a workable option in, in any environment, really. You, you need independent official officials there to, to regulate and to police. It, it just doesn't work. And for, for it to be considered a viable way to be going about it in this day and age, in a, in a sport as dangerous as horse racing, you, like you, it's utterly ludicrous. You, you started, Kevin, by saying that you know, there's too much focus on the peripheral stuff. We need to focus on, on, on the fundamentals. There's been a lot of heat uh, uh, generated around this, and maybe, maybe not so much light. But um, Anna Marie Phelps said this is a watershed moment. So does it have the potential to be that? Do you think, uh, are we capable of sitting down, drawing breath, and learning the right lessons? Um, well, look, based on the, the reactions of the jockeys, you'd have to say, you, 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 I don't think the change is going to come from within. You know, I think it's going to have to come from uh, regulation and policing to change that culture, because I, I think the, the culture suits a lot, especially the, the senior jockeys, and the, the young jockeys are looking up to the senior jockeys. So will that change come from within? I, I very much doubt it. But look, that this is what regulators are supposed to do. You know, <laughs> regulators and the police aren't supposed to be popular. They won't be popular if they're doing their job. And if they want to really take on board the important stuff from this case and the Freddie Tlicky case on, that's ongoing, you know, they have to go in and make changes themselves. They will be unpopular within the weighing room. They will be popular, unpopular with the PJA. But that's what regulators do. And I, I sometimes feel that everyone wants to be pals in this game. They don't want to upset each other. But if you want to make a positive impact and get this game into the, into the 21st century, I think that's what needs to happen. It's a good note to end on. Many thanks for your input, concise as ever, Kevin. Many thanks. Cheers.